Leia here from LeiaForSci.com, and in this video, we'll continue our discussion of nucleophilic substitution reactions. So far, we've discussed how to work through an SN1 reaction or an SN2 reaction by analyzing things like the alkyl chain, leaving group, attacking nucleophile base, or solvent, each of which was discussed in its own video that you can find on my website, LeiaForSci.com slash substitution dash elimination. But in this video, I'm going to show you how to recognize if the mechanism is SN1 or SN2 when you're not explicitly told which reaction takes place. But first, a quick review of these four components. For the alkyl chain, we're trying to determine if a stable carbocation can take place on either a tertiary or secondary carbon. For SN2, we're trying to determine if the nucleophile has room to attack, meaning a methyl, a primary, or secondary carbon, without having any steric hindrance or blocking from nearby groups. The leaving group is very important in SN1 because it has to leave by itself, causing a carbocation to form. Not as important in SN2 because the nucleophile will kick it out. The attacking group in a substitution reaction will be a nucleophile rather than a base, and an SN2 reaction takes place when you have a strong or negative nucleophile. An SN1 reaction tends to happen with a weaker or neutral nucleophile. And finally, for solvents, if we have a polar protic solvent, we can easily dissolve any charges that form, and this tends to favor an SO1 reaction. If we have a polar aprotic solvent, we don't have the means to stabilize a charged leaving group in carbocation, so this will tend to favor an SN2 reaction. So we'll take our first example and analyze every component of the checklist. For the alkyl chain, we have a leaving group attached to a methyl carbon. Since methyl carbocation will be very unstable, it will not form, so we cannot have an SN1 reaction. I write no 1, meaning no SN1 or E1 reaction can take place because I cannot form that methyl carbocation. For the leaving group, we have a bromine. Bromine is a halogen and is therefore a good leaving group in the sense that when it breaks away and forms a negative charge in solution, the negative is distributed over this large atom, making it relatively stable. Our attacking group is NaCN, and while it appears neutral at first glance, it's actually charged. We have sodium as a positive spectator ion and CN, which has a negative charge. A negative carbon is very reactive and therefore makes a very strong nucleophile, giving us a two-type reaction where substitution is favored over elimination given that the triple bond on the cyanide is highly polarizable and polarizable negative molecules tend to be good nucleophiles. And finally we have the solvent which is DMSO or dimethyl sulfoxide. Since this is a polar aprotic solvent, the strong nucleophile will be activated in this solution and it can easily attack because there's no hindrance on the methyl group Polar aprotic solvents tend to favor the substitution over the elimination reaction. Given that the polar aprotic solvent activates my nucleophile, which can easily attack the unhindered methyl carbon, all factors point to a substitution two type, meaning SN2 reaction. For the SN2 reaction of cyanide with bromomethane, the lone electron pair on the CN- will attack the methyl carbon kicking out the bromine leaving group. For the final product, I have my CH3 now bound to the C triple N. The net charge on my starting products is negative one because I have a neutral molecule getting attacked by a negative nucleophile. The net charge on my products appears to be neutral, but don't forget we have a Br- in solution, once again giving us a net charge of negative one. We have no chirality in this molecule, given that carbon does not have four unique substituents. For our next example, we'll analyze what happens when 2-chloro-2-methylbutane is dissolved in methanol in the presence of H2SO4. Looking at the alkyl chain, the leaving group is attached to a tertiary carbon, which means a carbocation would be very stable and therefore we can have a one-type reaction. Chlorine as a halogen is a good leaving group because the charge will be distributed over the large halide in solution. We don't appear to have an attacking nucleophile or base, instead we notice that we have H2SO4. Whenever you see H2SO4, just think of it as seeing H+, which is an acid catalyst. And while this acid catalyst does not actually attack the molecule, 
having an acidic or positive solution means you cannot form any strong negative charges for example o minus and this means you cannot have any strong nucleophiles or bases and therefore will most likely have a one type in this case an sn1 reaction since h2so4 is simply a catalyst we have to consider solvolysis in this reaction where the solvent acts as the nucleophile or the base ch3oh is neutral giving me a weak nucleophile or base, and this gives me a one type, meaning SN1 or E1 reaction. And lastly, methanol as a solvent is polar protic, which means it will dissolve any charged intermediates in solution, and once again tends to favor the one type reaction. For this mechanism, we'll only look at the SN1 reaction, but keep in mind that E1 can take place. The reaction begins when chlorine grabs the bonding electrons away from carbon, breaking off into solution, and leaving me with a positive tertiary carbocation. The Cl- is off somewhere in solution, and we're left with a tertiary carbocation on our carbon chain. The solvent molecule will reach out with a lone pair of electrons and attack the carbocation, resulting in a bond between oxygen and carbon. Since the oxygen used one of its lone pairs to create a bond, it only has one lone pair remaining, giving it a positive charge, which is removed when another solvent molecule will reach out with its lone pair of electrons, take away that extra hydrogen from our molecule, collapsing the electrons back onto oxygen. Oxygen is now neutral, given that it has two bonds and two lone pairs of electrons. But what if you're given a substitution mechanism where the outcome is not that obvious? Be sure to join me in the next video where I take you through two of this type of reaction. Are you struggling with organic chemistry? Are you looking for information to guide you through the course and help you succeed? If so, download my ebook, 10 Secrets to Acing Organic Chemistry, using the link below, or visit layofersci.com slash orgo secrets. That's O-R-G-O secrets. For information regarding online tutoring, visit layofersci.com slash orgotutor. That's O-R-G-O tutor. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and even share it with a friend or two. If you have any questions regarding this video, leave a comment below or contact me through my Facebook page at facebook.com forward slash There will be many related videos posted over the course of the semester, so go ahead and click the subscribe button to ensure that you don't miss out.